In this week's episode, we're, we're getting flashy in gaming. I'll show you how you can make your own customized flash game using free software. A lot of stuff goes into this project, so let's go ahead and roll the intro. After getting my beta invite for a new flash game called Glitch, I've been wondering what it would take to make my own flash game. I was looking up Adobe Flash and how much it costs and how complicated action scripting can be, and needless to say I was getting very disappointed. But then I found the flash game beauty behemoth that is Stencilworks. Stencilworks is a free flash game maker that gives you full design control without having to learn any coding. You may also notice on their webpage that eventually you'll be able to create and design games for iOS and Android devices as well, but that's still in closed beta. But anyway, sign up for a Stencil account and download Stencilworks so we can get this party started. My idea is to make a simple 9-cat shooter game in which I'll cover all the basics without getting over complicated. After you've got the basics down though, feel free to expand upon this basis and make something even more awesome. So start up Stencilworks, sign in, and get the game listings. You can customize and edit any of these games as your own, but since we're starting from scratch, let's just create a blank one. Give it a name, choose a size, and click create. Now take note of the screen layout. To the left you'll see the library which is where all of your game components will be stored. And to the right you'll see the stage where you can edit all of your game components. Now let's begin adding stuff to our game. We'll start with the first level. Click scene and create a new one. Give it a name, change the background color to no color or whatever color you want and click create. A new tab opens up with your empty level. So let's make it not so empty. Click the Game Center tab and click to add a background. But instead of creating a new one, let's grab one from Stencil Forge. Stencil Forge is a free market for downloading Stencil game components. This is where all of our components for the game will come from. So search for Universe 1, select it and download it. Downloading stuff from Stencil Forge adds it to your game and opens it up in a new tab. The new tab lets you tweak the component settings. For the background we want it to scroll left, so under horizontal speed set it to about 50 and make sure repeat background is selected. Then to attach it to our scene, click attach to scene at the top and double click on the first level that we created. Now we're back to the scene tab but just under the background section. To switch back to scene view, click on the scene section again. Whoa, wait a second, it's empty. Well, to view the background, you can click this button, but before I do that, I'm going to add some player actors first. So, back in Stencil Forge, search for Nyan Cat, Tack Nain, Bullet, and Enemy Bullet. Save the game real quick and then go to the Nyan Cat tab and add it to your scene. After doing so, you'll see all of your actors have now been imported into the scene. So, with the pencil tool selected, click on the hero, Nyan Cat, and add it anywhere you want on the scene. Do the same for Tech Nain, the enemy. Now let's test this dude. The background should be moving, and you'll notice Tech Nain already has some movement. That's because it came pre-packaged with movement and health components. You can use them if you want, but I'm going to be adding new ones. But before we do that, let's worry about adding movement to Nyan Cat. So in the game center, click controls and see what keyboard keys are already set up. Then let's add a new one called fire and set it to the spacebar key. We can attach these keys to Nyan Cat through what's called behaviors. Normally making behaviors would get complicated, but luckily we can just grab some new ones from Stencil Forge. The one for the keyboard keys is called four way movement. And while we're here, let's just go ahead and download the other ones we need as well. So download Cannot Exit Screen, Action Pack, and Health Pack. Packs are just a whole bunch of behaviors bundled into one download. If you look at the tabs for these behaviors, you'll see a lot of scary looking boxes. But don't worry about that. All we have to do is attach them to the appropriate actors. So for four-way movement, attach it to Nyan Cat. This takes us to the behavior section of the Nyan Cat tab. 
Here you just match the settings with what you want for your game. So initial direction will be facing right and then the up, down, left and right controls match the corresponding keys. There's only one animation so just use that one for all the different animations. Now when you test it out you can control the movement of Niancat but you can also move it too far off the screen. So to fix that just attach the cannot exit screen behavior to Niancat also. To finish off Niancat's movement click on the physics section and set it to not rotate and turn off the gravity. As for tack name, click on its behaviors and delete all the existing ones except for circular motion and shooting around the clock. You can tweak these behaviors just by clicking on them. For shoot around the clock, you want to set the actor type to enemy bullet and set the speed to around 10 or 15. Then to make it shoot bullets left, uncheck every box except 9 o'clock. We also want to add bullets to Niancat, so to do this, under Game Center, select our Action Pack, double click on Fire Bullet and attach it to Niancat. Choose the Bullet Actor for it and set the angle to East and the speed to around 15 or 20 so that it fires right. Under the Trigger message, type Shoot and you'll see what that's for in a second. Back in our Action Pack, attach Do on Key Press to Niancat. Set the key to the fire control that we made earlier and set action to perform to shoot which triggers the bullet firing script. When you test it out now, tech name should already be shooting and the spacebar lets 9 cat shoot. But no one's getting damaged by the bullets, so let's fix that next. In game center, go to collision groups which sets up how each actor affects other actors. We already have one for our player, Niancat, so let's add one for the enemy, Hero Bullet, and Enemy Bullet. The Collide With buttons let you select who each actor collides with. Set the Enemy Bullet to collide with a player, the Hero Bullet to collide with the enemy, and the enemy to collide with the Hero Bullet and a player. Lastly, the player should already be set to collide with Enemy and Enemy Bullet. Then assign these collisions to each actor. Under Niancat, click Collision and set it to Player. For Tact Name, set it to Enemy. For Enemy Bullet, set it to Enemy Bullet. And for Bullet, set it to Hero Bullet. Like the Niancat and Tact Name actors, the bullets can also be given behaviors. Under Game Center Actor Behaviors, we want to select Collisions and attach Die Upon Collision to both bullet actors. Then under our health pack, attach inflicts damage to both bullet actors as well. You can set the damage attributes to whatever you want, but I set mine to 2. Lastly, let's give our players some health attributes. In game center, select health pack and attach the health behavior to both Niancat and Tac Name. For the settings, set the initial and max to 10. Also from our health pack, add a flicker when hit behavior so that we know when both players are hit. Last but not least, add a health bar to both players so that we know how much damage has been done. Now test it out and that's it. You've made a fully fledged flash game. So now you can publish it or upload it to stencil.com or you can export it as an SWF file and burn it to a CD or flash drive. From this starting point, I want to see what you guys do with it and what you add to it. Try to add stuff like sound effects, background music, explosions, title screens, and even different levels. Have fun with it and be sure to check me out on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. That's it for this tutorial. For more, go to Tinkernut.com.